Justin Morneau is now on the squad. I've been wanting to pick up this flashback Morneau for a very long time. I think when I originally wanted to pick him up, he was going for a lot of stubs for one. And I had a lot of first basemen who I didn't use yet. Like, I think I had the uh, Orlando Cepeda from the captain sets and Jeff Bagwell and just a couple other players I didn't use. And I did use them. I didn't even like them. So, yeah, I've been wanting to get this uh, flashback Morneau for a long time, man. Those hitting stats are pretty damn good. I mean, he has better power versus lefties. And his vision is is pretty damn good as well. So you could stick him out there against lefties, and he can he can even do well against the lefties out there. The 60 fielding is a little bit disrespectful, if you ask me, because if I remember uh, Justin Morneau in his prime, he was a he was a good defensive first baseman. I mean, 60 fielding is a little bit low, if you ask me. It should be around like 75 at least. But either way, those hitting stats, I have a feeling that this uh, flashback Morneau is going to do damage at the plate. So this is his debut game, and yeah, I think I had like Carl Crawford back in the lineup too. I said I was going to put McCutcheon back in the lineup this game, but yeah, Crawford got a triple in the last game, so I wanted to leave him back in, and Crawford is always good for at least one hit, but yeah, McCutcheon is going to be back in the lineup at some point in time. Do not worry. I had A-Rod playing short this game, which some people may be like, this motherfucker is crazy. I played A-Rod at short a couple games. He was doing... Or he did very well at short every every uh, game I play with him at short. I made like a couple errors over there at third base with this uh, 2007 A-Rod. But when he played short, I did not make a single error. So he is playing short this game. I mean, Morneau, Morneau bailed him out on that throw right there uh, to end that inning. So yeah, Morneau's defensive stats coming into play right there. A-Rod with the bad throw. But Morneau's first at bat. You know I am swinging for the fences. Everybody making the debuts, I'm swinging for the fences. But I'm I'm able to squeeze one by Cano over there, and he's able to get on the board with a single one for one on the day. So now Braun is up. Pretty much a hit machine as well. This 95 Braun is, but he is just flying out in foul territory. I've been going back to back a lot lately. This guy is looking to give me a taste of my own medicine in the top of the second. Here's a swing, and oh, man. Way out of here. Yeah, and he's got to be careful not to give up yet another home run. Oh, hang on now. This ball is smoked to right, and I don't think this one's coming back. No chance. It's gone. So that may have been the biggest jinx I've ever heard. This guy is talking about how I, I should not or I better not give up another home run in this inning. As he is saying that sentence, I give up a moonshot to Ortiz. So that is back-to-back -back jacks. That is not how you want to start off the game. I mean, the winning streak is on the line too. Didn't I don't think I mentioned that yet. I'm on a 10-game winning streak heading into this game. So I'm looking to make it 11. And A-Rod is able to get a base hit down the third base line in his first at-bat too. Trying to get A-Rod going at the plate, man. I've been sitting him out just because, yeah, he's he's pretty much been a guaranteed out some games. But some games he's going out there and he's getting, you know, two or three hits too. So that is a good start for A-Rod. And Steve Finley too, man. It's been hard to get Steve Finley out of the lineup. I mean, that's why I haven't been playing, you know, Grady Sizemore as much in the past couple games. And just other players I said I was going to play. Matt Kemp. I mean, yeah, Steve Finley has been a hit machine since he's came in the lineup, too. So I've been playing Steve Finley a lot. And I think this guy had a pretty solid team. I think he had, like, the... I don't know if he had the prime Tulowitzki, if I remember, but he had Troy Tulowitzki. Even the live series is not too bad. But he had, like, yeah, of course he had Ichiro. He had the 95 Braun as well. I think he had the prime Ortiz. And he had he had Pineda starting on the mound, which was a little bit of a shock. I mean, I think this obviously this guy was a Yankees fan, so I guess maybe that's why he was playing. Pineda just wanted to use Yankee players. But yeah, I wasn't really getting much going against this Pineda early in this game. I did get a hit with Morneau and A-Rod, but other than that, not so much. I put Ted Williams in as a pinch hitter. I mean, that may be a huge boneheaded mistake. I mean, Samarja did not get off to a good start. I did get up, I did give up those back-to-back -back jacks, so I put in Ted Williams, but I'm just grounding out to first right there, so that was a fail. So now I go. I got to go to the pen early, which I really don't care about because I got so many flamethrowers and just beasts in the pen that it doesn't even matter if I go to the pen in the first inning. I put in Andrew Miller to try and get out of this, try and get out of the fourth inning with no damage being done. He's got a runner on first base. I think I walked him. 
So yeah, trying to get this, I think I, this Diamond Dynasty player is up who was a very, I think he was like a 90-something overall because those stats were pretty damn crazy. So yeah, I finally get his Diamond Dynasty player to fly out to uh, Finley out there in right field after a pretty lengthy at-bat. So now Grady. Grady needs to start it off. Grady needs to get something on the board. He is usually the go-to guy if I want to get a rally going. So with a 1-2 count in the bottom of the fourth, I'm able to get a single with Grady. That is his first on the board in this game. He is going to be getting some more base hits. That is usually that is usually what happens when Grady gets a base hit early in the game. He is good for at least two more. Uh, so Morneau needs to cash in. Needs to cash in Grady or just get a base hit. So I'm I'm threatening with Braun and A-Rod coming to the plate after him. That is an ugly swing. That is very ugly right there. I have no idea why I swung at that. I had a feeling this guy was going to try and pound me inside. Just got under that change up right there, man. That was a good swing. If I didn't get under that one, that would have been hit to the triple deck, I figured. But yeah, Morneau just flying out for his second at bat. And then A-Rod getting another base hit right there off Pineda. That was a weak throw to first base. But that, that should have been up the middle anyway. So that is a base hit on the board for A-Rod too. So he is two for two in this game at short. Maybe I should just leave A-Rod over there at short because he plays better at short. And he does better at the plate when he's at short. So I may, I don't know, I may leave A-Rod at short for a little bit. Even though I like using that flashback J.J. Hardy when there's lefties on the mound and stuff. I may leave A-Rod over there at short for a little bit. Steve Finley just flies out to uh, the catcher right above home plate to end that inning. So going into the fifth. Ichiro is leading it off. I was actually thinking about putting somebody else in from the pen, but the lefty coming up. Leave Andrew Miller in. Sit down, Ichiro. Don't ever come back. So Ichiro gets punched out. Tulowitzki sends one, sends one to right field, and he is getting a double. Steve Finley doesn't have the best arm, so I wasn't even going to come close to throwing him out. So this guy is threatening again. After that last game I had... I was due to get, you know, destroyed, to be honest, because, yeah, I had the, 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 my opponent in the last game had the bases loaded in the first inning, and he was also threatening, like, the third or some on second and third. He was not able to get one run on the board in the last game, so I kind of got lucky and walked away with the W in the last game. I know some people have been noticing, too. I've been struggling with this flashback Pablo Sandoval so far, but man, it's only been how many games? Like five, six, seven games that he's played in so far? Probably more than that, but still. He's just going to break out one game, and he's just going to go off and go like three for four or four for five or five for five or something. So yeah, I'm going to be leaving Pablo in, man. It's kind of weird because when I was playing Pierzynski, people were getting sick of seeing Pierzynski, and now that I'm uh, kind of struggling with this flashback Sandoval at the plate... Some people are saying that I should bench him, so I don't even know who I should, who else I could even possibly pick up because I've used a lot of catchers in this game. The only catcher I haven't used yet who I kind of want to use is the uh, prime Joe Maurer. I mean, everybody wants to use him, but he's still going for a shitload of stubs. There's no chance I'm spending a hundred something thousand stubs on a player that's been out in this game for a very long time. Pujols. He was put in this game as a pinch hitter too, getting robbed on that damn shift that probably would have been a ground out anyway, but still getting robbed. This guy's trying to lay down a bunt with the pitcher, which is, you know, that's that's acceptable. You're trying to lay down a bunt with the pitcher to advance the runner, that's acceptable, I will take that, that is not BS, but I'm getting the double play, that was a bad bunt, I was playing the corners in too, so I don't know, I wouldn't lay down a bunt right there, I'm getting the double play, so he is not able to get another run on the board, he's still got a 2 nothing lead. I'm trying to get something going offensively, man. I don't even know what it is. Pineda was wheeling and dealing on the hill. For some reason, I wasn't able to get something going early in this game, which is kind of rare from the squad. Usually, I jump off in like the first or second inning. I will just string together like four or five hits in a row and take an early lead with the squad. But this game, not so much. Each row gets a base hit. That is just... That is just the most annoying thing in this game when flashback Ichiro gets a base hit. He's trying to steal second base. He's able to get in there, but I'm able to get uh, the man out at first base right there. So Ichiro is in scoring position with Ryan Braun coming to the play. I think this guy had the 95 Braun too, which I don't blame people for having. He is a beast. This could have been the 97 Braun. I have no idea. I don't even think I've seen that many people use the 97 Braun, but... He is just grounding out to third base right there. Braun making the play. Braun hasn't made one error over there at third base. I believe every single person who was saying that they picked up the rookie Braun and they put him at first base and he didn't make a single error. I believe everybody because I have not made one error with that rookie Braun yet. 
So I'm going to be leaving him at third base, man. I was thinking about just putting him in the outfield because 50 fielding, I would rather have somebody with 50 fielding. Uh, actually, I think I'd rather have some, somebody with 50 fielding at third base. Call me crazy fucking person from saying that, but still, man, you know with those bad fielding outfielders, those, sh those balls in the gap you cannot catch up to, and if you do, you'll probably whiff on them anyway. So, bad mistake. I put in Billy Wagner against Carlos Beltran. I have no idea what Beltran that was, to be honest. That could have very well been the prime. I have, I have no idea what Carlos Beltran that was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the live series Carlos Beltran. It, it could have been because, yeah, this guy was, even though Beltran isn't on the Yankees anymore, he was early in the season, this past season, obviously. So maybe it was the live series Beltran. But he is getting a solo shot on the board. So he is now taking a 3 nothing lead. Crawford gets a stand-up double to begin the ninth. So this is where it gets interesting. Grady hits one off the wall that should have been gone, if you ask me, but that is just off the wall. Crawford scores easily. Grady is in to second. So more no. This guy needs to do something in his debut game. You know I am swinging for the fences, trying to tie it up. He hits one deep. That is high and deep to center field. It's looking good. It is looking good, but Ichiro makes the grab in center field. Damn, man, that is just insane. I thought that was gone for sure. I was on my feet, but that is just ah, oh, that is just a fly out to center field. But then Braun steps up to the plate. He's not able to corral that at short, so I'm able to score Grady from second and get in there at first base safely. There's still only one down. A-Rod is up. He's two for three on the day. He's swinging a hot bat, and I am just hitting a weak little, little chopper in front of home plate. Damn. Two down in the bottom of the ninth. It is down to Steve Finley. I don't even care because Steve Finley has been one of the best hitters on the squad so far. Bad swing to begin this at bat. A base hit ties this game. I didn't think there was going to be a chance. After he hit that solo shot in the top of the ninth, I didn't think there was going to be hope in hell. I had any chance in this game. But with an 0-2 count, line drive to right field. That is caught. That is caught. That is game set and match. The win streak is done. Man, that was close. I thought I was going to make a comeback, especially with Steve Finley coming to the plate. Pineda gets player of the game. I struck out seven times. He did give up seven hits. So I don't know, man. That, I don't know. That was a questionable player of the game, if you ask me. Everybody knows MLB The Show loves giving pitchers player of the game. But that was a good performance.